episode 29 and today I would like to talk a little bit about clean tones. Um, yeah, we had so much boutique overdrive in the last episode and I think um, the clean sounds were uh, not so much in focus yet. Um, <clears throat> and I got this wonderful, whatever, Tokai guitar. Um, which my nephew discovered in my collection, which I haven't been used for um, 20 years or whenever I bought it or 10 years. And um, yeah, it was kind of a little journey how to make this guitar a guitar that I like to play like right now. Um, so in the second section, we will see some insights, what you can do on a guitar, kind of pimp your ex. You know, it's a, it's a guitar that was simply sitting here doing nothing special and I thought, or he thought actually, um, you should play that guitar. And um, this was the starting point of investigating what could be improved and how to make a guitar your guitar. So that's the second half of this episode. First I'd like to show you a little bit how I dial in clean tones on the M1 Mercury Edition or on the M1 in general. Um, the sound that I have been playing just in the intro is a break, you know, it's a clean tone that's on the edge of breaking up. This is um, so I can have a lot of playing dynamics, like when I do this. In That's um, a kind of clean tone that I really like. Um, sometimes we need cleaner clean tones, but let me show you how I dial in such a sound. I'm on the clean channel. I'm using the bass in the middle. It's kind of five, it doesn't matter, kind of. <laughs> um, the mids are up a little bit to six and a half or seven, treble in the middle. Today I'm using um, the blue box on the silver 112, which is uh, my Fender Princeton cabinet. Um, it's a silver face, Princeton 12 inch with the typical Fender um, Jensen speaker in it. And I could use you know, the, all the channels of the amp one on that speaker or on that setting, just to show you. <laughs> Here is the vintage channel. It's kind of the same thing, just a little hotter. I would call this like the hot country sound of a blues. This is the modern channel, so um, I got a gain kind of in the middle, so I, I'm more in this fe traditional Fender territory. So, you know, the vintage channel sounds like a hot driven Fender. <laughs> Classic channel gives me a bit more rock. Kind of 
hot and spicy fender -esque tone, which is now on the classic channel, and the modern is even creamier. <laughs> Yeah, gain is on six, and if I need more gain, I engage the boost. Yeah, a total different amp from you know the other episodes where I was more martial esque or, or you know. Um, the, the bigger rock sound. This is more like the blues country territory. Okay, back to the clean tone. Um, well, first you could see all the sounds can actually match. I can use all the four channels, even having a different speaker and having, you know, usable um, a Fender style array of sounds. Okay, um, the hot the hot driven clean sound is what I have here now. If I get rid of the boost, it's not hot anymore. So this is just a clean tone. There's nothing special about it. So if I want that sound to be um, brighter, I increase the, the clean tone all the way up, give it a little bit more volume so we com can compare. That's kind of a more flat sound, which is nice too. There's not as much compression and there is actually kind of no overdrive. settings I'm using right now is clean volume on 8 so it's kind of rich and full from the clean volume because you have to think of the clean volume as a Fender volume uh, on a classic Fender amp. A classic Fender does not have a master volume so if you play a classic Fender amp with a bright switch which is what I have here on this volume you can make this kind of rich and hot but kind of slightly overdriven if you crank the amp. This is what happens here on 10. Or when I reduce the, the volume on the Fender amp, that's the same thing here, and then it becomes a lot cleaner. And it's super sparkling because our clean volume has a treble bleed, which is like the bright switch on a fender, which means the more you reduce the volume, the cleaner it gets, the more sparkle you get. So this is super clean, but it's maybe too bright. And in this case, you can use the clean tone, custom control, and put it on the other side, kind of counterclockwise, and then all the sparkle is gone. put it in the middle there's a little sparkle and all the way up there's a lot of sparkle
that's a trick that you should use, especially when you use a humbucker guitar. Oh, let's do it. Um, because the Strat has a lot of sparkle by nature, and a humbucker guitar doesn't have all the sparkle. So, therefore, make sure volume is not set too high, because that's, well, um, that would saturate um, the, the clean channel. I can show you, it sounds ugly. It's like, uh, or it sounds uh, rock and roll. So this is our clean channel. Well, it's, it's not clean anymore. So let's go back to whatever, six or something. And this is... Dial it back to the point where you hear the clarity. It's probably here, about five or six. point here is with this guitar I like the clean tone all the way up. I put it on the other side so I am, get more mellow or jazzy tone. Clean tone open. I would put it in the middle for this guitar at this moment. thing is what to do with the boost. Um, if you want more sparkle you can use the boost but you have to be careful and put the boost level down because then you get extra sparkle. <laughs> Of course, it's getting a little bit hotter, like without the boost, but listen, no boost and boost. Boost. No boost. that extra um, coming from the boost. Mind that now the boost level is kind of on zero. And from here you can use more boost to make, you know, kind of a little bit compression. This is like middle position. And now you have the freedom to use the boost or not. Without the boost you have a nice rhythm tone. You can go solo. So you can see there's many ways to dial in a clean tone without even touching the three-band tone control. And that's so important because 
some people don't get it. They, they play the M1 and they think, oh yeah, I love your overdrive tones, but y your clean tone sounds muddy or compressed or I'm missing the, the sparkle. The trick is use the clean volume to create the basic tone, then balance it out with the clean tone um, on the custom control. And this gives you the foundation. And then there's still the boost. So you can have like three ways to access different frequencies without touching the three band tone control. So we have a lot of options and you get, you know, the perfect clean tone matching your overdrive sounds. Um, yeah. Anyway, back to this beautiful Back to this beautiful guitar. Um, ah, let's do no. Let's do it. Let's do it that way. Um, <laughs> I'm plugged in in the in the other set here, which I was using in the last episode where we compared the Soldano, which is here. And okay, uh, uh, versus the M1. <laughs> This was our setting from the last episode. And now I try to find a matching clean tone with the same amp without touching the tone controls. So clean channel, same guitar, and then... Well, this is already too good. <laughs> because, okay, yeah, maybe I dialed it in before. Same recipe, um, see, I'm not... This sounds shit. Clean volume on 10 is simply too much for that guitar. It's just saturation. No, dial it back. See, this is where it gets clean. This is 7, 6 with the Les Paul. 5. Ah, and I'm using the boost as well. First, maybe without the boost. This is... Yeah, but I was using the boost for my overdrive um, sound to match the Soldano. So I'll just leave the boost on because it's easier to switch between the channels. Yeah, and here's my clean tone. Now double check with the custom control. This is counterclockwise, kind of the more mellow sound. Still very nice or on the other side with the bright side. Maybe a bit cold, I put it in the middle. Okay, um, and this setup was using um, my blue box, the other blue box uh, with the Stack 1970, which is kind of the Marshall uh, greenback loaded stack that I always use. And you can hear you have a beautiful boutique overdrive tone and a boutique clean tone as well. There's nothing. Really speaks and it really has this kind of yeah openness in a way without being too harsh.
nice clean tune and you go back and <laughs> And here's your world of overdrive. Okay. And finally, let's go back for the strat, um, which is, where is it? Oh, here it is. <laughs> um, so this was a long journey for this guitar. When I, when I bought this guitar, um, somebody told me, yeah, um, Tokai makes some, you know, really good copies of vintage guitars, and this goes back like 20 years. And, you know, me being the guy that always plays uh, rosewood necks, you know, the dark uh, fingerboards, I always wanted to have a maple neck strut. And um, somehow, yeah, I found this guitar is a ST100. Um, it should have been something super special. And so I bought a guitar because I kind of thought this is a cool thing. I found out two things. First, I'm not the maple neck guy. <laughs> so um, maple neck is not 100% my cup of tea. I always, you know, I play strats and I play strats and I play a maple neck strat and it's okay. But then, you know what, I go back for my 61 because it's such a great guitar. So this guitar kind of always lost the battle versus my real deal 61 which is here um, and so it, it it's it had its life somewhere in the corner and I forgot about it and then um, one yeah one day this summer I got um, a very nice visit of my nephew Finn Blug who also plays a white Stratocaster. <laughs> um, he, he's living up in the north of Germany in Hamburg. And um, he saw that guitar and said, oh, Uncle, Uncle Thomas, you have a maple neck strat, so please, um, what's up with this thing? And I, I took the guitar and I thought, yeah, you know, I know why I don't play it that much, because it was not as alive. And then um, he asked me, what I would do to this guitar to make this my own guitar. And I, I had to say, okay, let's start with um, the right setup because there was, I don't know, 10s, 11s, kind of thick strings on it. Um, the action was in a different way that I like to, to do, do, it, do it. And then um, the, the whammy bar wasn't set the right way and um, everything was like, you know, as it was, and um, I, I actually started to make this guitar like a guitar of my own that I would, would really play. So Finn kind of gave me the initial spark to make this a project. And um, once I, I finished this with, with Finn, um, this was a pre-recorded thing in summer when he was uh, visiting me here, uh, I, we were still wearing, you know, short sleeves, <laughs> t-shirts. Um, I, I found, yeah, it's, it, it, well, it's improving, it's getting there. But then when he left, I thought, you know, it's not bad, but it could be better. Because I, I know some better vintage guitars. I, I have a friend who is a collector and he has a 56 Strat. And um, yeah, I know that guitar, and that guitar has more wood in the tone. Yeah. And then I thought, you know what? On one of my trips visiting Andreas Kloppmann, the guy that is famous for his pickups, um, we had him on another episode. Um, I, I, I simply brought my guitar to his workshop in Bremen, um, show them the guitar and simply ask, what would you do to this guitar? And he played the guitar, he thought, hey, it's not bad. And then suddenly um, he was digging in deeper. He took the scratch plate off, he was measuring the pots. He was 
in the end changing everything. The pots, the pickups, so the whole electronics was different and this was already a huge improvement. So the next step is I, I have um, a bridge, a Wilkinson um, VS54 year one hardware, which we created together with Trevor Wilkinson for my blue guitars. Oops, let's see it. Here, here's one of those. So this, this guitar is using a prototype of that bridge. Finally, the VS54 is now available um, even for people not like me. And I decided to change the tremolo system. This is the original one. You can see the gold hardware. Um, and it's actually pretty good already. It's, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a cheap one. So you can see this is the original Tokai uh, saddles and it has already a fat block with shallow holes. Um, this is the, the, the tremolo system that was on that guitar. But I decided since I have the source with good tremolos, let's swap the tremolo. Um, so I put in that tremolo and guess what? There was a lot more definition in the tone. First part of the definition come, came from the pickups and um, the second you know, half of the definition I was really impressed came from the, from the tremolo system. So, and this is how I can get to my that kind of nice and warm twang without uh, the frequencies that actually hurt. It's like Anyway, um, so there was already a lot of definition. And then when I was playing the guitar, I felt like, you know what? Hey, it, it, the edge of the fretboard was not my style. I like vintage guitars that have been played for ages. And all of these guitars have been refretted, which means you put, put in new frets. And then when you do the fret job, you cut the edges and then the neck gets a little bit rounder. So I gave this guitar to my dear friend Robert Volpatti, asking him to put on my favorite frets, which are Dunlops 6105s, you know, medium jumbos, high, because the original frets were kind of vintage frets, uh, vintage specs, not as high and very, very thin spaghetti <laughs> uh, frets. And now, the feel is different. So that's another element I have done to the guitar. And This guitar has the magic and this guitar is now you know in my hands feels right and it's a joy to play it so the idea of what you see now is pimp your ex you know if you have a guitar that is not doing what you 
expect from a guitar, there are a few things you can double check, you can improve. And of course I went all the way because I have all my nice friends who did all the work. Um, but you can see which part does what aspects in the whole process of a guitar. Different strings, different pickups, different potties, different bridge, different frets. I left the I left the, the paint job because this is pretty good. Um, but these are all the aspects that um, came to mind how to improve that guitar. Maybe you think it's a bit too much. Yes, but I use that as an example to show you what all can be done. And if you do just one thing, because you can improve a lot by just in enhancing the weakest point. You know, you make so much better tone if you just have the weakest thing fixed in a way. And the most important thing is also to do, to do the setup right. So I spent last night at least one hour to get, you know, the tremolo the way I like it so it bends up a minor third to make the adjustment of the saddle's intonation right, um, to get the, the height right so the bends um, still work but the, the, the action is not too high. So you have to give it, you know, some time, a little love and then it's an instrument that you really will enjoy playing. And this can be applied to most other guitars if they are not totally crap. <laughs> so, enjoy the rest of this episode with um, my nephew Finn, with my visit um, at Andreas Kloppmann, um, the pickup maker. And uh, yeah, ah, one thing I forgot about, we have a new guy at Blue Guitar. And um, we had this little quiz in the last episode and guess what? You voted or you thought it's Manuel Kettenring. I have to disappoint you. It is not Manuel. I mean, we'll have him back and he's kind of a friend of us anyway. But it's somebody else. So you have to guess again. And this gentleman is coming next week. So. Stay tuned, be surprised who it is. Okay, enjoy the rest of this episode and yeah, see you soon on the moon. Cheers. Today we have a very special guest, Mr. Hello. Finn Bluk. <laughs> from Hamburg. He is my yeah. nephew. Maybe you can see some similarities on yeah. whatever. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, the son of my beloved sister. And yeah. he is living in Hamburg, North Germany. Yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And um, actually, I've been, or I, I lived in Hamburg as well when you were very young, like around the 2000 years. Yeah, I think I was three, something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and I spent like three years in Hamburg, um, having a production company, and we tried to to make it in the pop business kind of uh, you know Backstreet Boys kind of style, and it didn't work <laughs> out. But yeah. back then there was um, some music uh, business in Hamburg, like record companies. Uh, yeah, I don't know how this is today. The only thing I remember is, besides being the pop producer, I still was interested in the bands and the local scene. And so um, I checked out the Reeperbahn yeah. <laughs> and, and this super stylish venue, which was called the Molotov. Yeah. Um, it's still there. It's still there. It, it, it moved, but it's still there. Okay. And there are also some different clubs and music business. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would say most of the new music is like techno music, some, some digital music, yeah. but there's definitely a scene for bands. Okay. And um, yeah, I was in there too. I got some projects so yeah. and I played some venues, also venues that are there for almost 30 years or right. longer, like 
The Greenspan, äh, yeah. Große Freiheit, Molotov and some little venues uh, at the Sternbrücke. So yeah. like the Bad uh, 227, my local friends will know what I mean. Yeah, so, but you also play the Markthalle one? Yeah, yeah, I play there once, like in band contest, yeah. not a solo show, but that was really cool. And I recorded my uh, live DVD uh, from yeah, I know. <laughs> in the Markthalle. And this is yeah, a historical cool. place because I have seen uh, recordings from the police when they yeah, I know, sta I know. started uh, to tour the world and they were small. They played also. Yeah, I know, Marthal. like Nirvana played there also too. Yeah. <laughs> Historical places. Yeah. 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 And for me, um, there was a certain spirit about Hamburg bands. I mean, it's, it's kind of back in the days in the 2000s, uh, there was some kind of an indie scene. Yeah. Is it still there? It's there too, definitely. There's so, a spirit. Yeah, like, there are some projects. There, there are also rehearsal rooms for new bands. Right. And they are like. Um, Autonom, uh, they, they just organize it by themselves. There are no like um, spending from the city or something like that. Yeah. And so there are really free rooms for new bands to go there and just jam or um, just form a new band. Mm -hmm. And the spirit is definitely there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember um, in the Molotov, um, <laughs> um, the, 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 the audience were, was kind of. The guys on stage were super cool. Okay. Yeah, they were all edgy. <laughs> <laughs> the attitude in Hamburg to yeah, me was, sure. it, it, you know, me being from Saarbrücken, south of Germany, everybody but is kind of, oh, it doesn't matter, relax, you know, mm. uh, we talk local slang, but, <laughs> but not trying not to be mm. uh, a star, you know, we kind of um, underdog. Um, yeah. style and in Hamburg I, I had a feeling like oh everybody is so cool and and then mm -hmm. uh, you know the the, the 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 student girls were kind of uh, giving their respect to the guys on stage yeah. <laughs> is this the same yeah it's the same I think it's like big cities got this uh -huh. because there's so much pressure from the outside that so many bands so right. this is not like you form a band and you're one of the three bands in the city you form a band and you really must be there and must get the attitude so you get recognition yeah. by someone else and so it comes naturally that you have this kind of cool because the venues you, go, you will play I yeah. have this attitude too and so it's like <laughs> like a circle yeah, yeah. okay okay it's it's a role that we have yeah, to play. yeah yeah I, I I'm not a fan of this all the time yeah but um, it's played like that so, yeah, yeah okay yeah you have I had to learn about this kind of attitude thing um, which was okay to understand, but mm. when you're new to this kind of thing, it's yeah, kind of it's weird. hard. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's a bit hard. Yeah. Okay, um, so this is the scene in Hamburg, but I I think there's still uh, studios there. There's still mm. uh, producers on any level. Yeah, because Hamburg's music history, of course, started with uh, uh, the Beatles and the Star Club uh, mm. and, and whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure. But they also had um, a. And the Norddeutsche Rundfunk uh, 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 TV station mm, yeah. and, and Bremen, which is kind of an hour south, they Good. had the, the Beat Club. So this yeah. is all the history. Yeah. And and then of course they builds up a scene and then that yeah you you know like yeah. uh, labels etc go yeah. there and have that and that's still there it's still in there. in every kind of um, professional level. Mm -hmm. So the producer we worked with. Mm -hmm. It's like more producer for little bands, just moved to Hamburg and built his own studio with okay. another guy uh, together. Mm -hmm. And there are still labels on there, um, also like uh, places to go there to buy records just out of Hamburg. Right. So um, it's definitely there, but all the major labels just gone away. So like uh, 30 Berlin? years ago, yeah, to Berlin. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And some just broke up because they yeah. couldn't get the money. Yeah. So yeah. Business has changed a yeah. lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I still remember the good years when when the business was making lots of money because um, they kind of the labels could release old vinyl recording, mm -hmm. recordings on CD again, so they had no production costs and they yeah. could cash in twice. Yeah, I and, know. <laughs> yeah, but and it's now not the it's same. over. It, yeah, now it's over because yeah, you got your digital streaming. Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. and streaming <laughs> to me is uh, not working for musicians really. I mean, yeah. it, it gives you the exposure, but not the money. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. This is a big topic. Yeah. Um, so, I think in Hamburg, there's a little scene, a little vinyl scenes coming back there. Okay. I also uh, work in a record shop. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that some people will buy some physical music, but it's over, like, um, 
20 years ago. It's not yeah, the same yeah, anymore. Yeah. And it's also changing the um, way to write music. So yeah. there's really big stuff going on right now mm -hmm. in the last 10 years. Yeah. And you also started to study musicology? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and and uh, so that's another big topic we will cover some later. Later, episode. later yeah. on, yes. But um, so you really go for the whole music thing in a way. Yeah, in, in a way. So I keep my practical science as a, as a, as a hobby. Yeah. And um, I really get so much theoretical things to think about. Not yeah. just music uh, in a harmonic way, but also like in a psychology, so. Yeah. Uh, um, social way, way. Yeah, yeah exactly and also all the historical stuff there is there in there too yeah. so yeah so, so what what is the background um what kind of um uh Band did you play, or bands did you play in? I I know <laughs> when you were younger, you also played the trombone. Yeah, I know. And, and I come back to that later on. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah because uh, I started a little bit of soul projects, okay. and it's just cool to play trombone or have some brass in there. Yeah. Um, before that, my my biggest project was like an alternative rock pop band, yeah. some kind of that. Uh, that. So I we just started jamming in a bluesy way, and it mm -hmm. comes uh, more that we gonna write really songs and um, want to produce a CD. So yeah, what happens always with the jams in that time. <laughs> so um, yeah, but it, it was really cool and I played with them like for three years yeah. and we got really cool gigs in that time. Right. So all the summer with a few festivals, the biggest uh, was the Hurricane actually. Wow. And um, yeah, that was really cool time. Yeah. and. Uh, Guitar-wise, what, what guitars did you use or do you use? Which guitars do you like? Yeah. Do, do you have dream guitars <laughs> or what, what's going on? Yeah, I, I have a dream guitar actually at home. Okay. So my first guitar was a Strat. You uh, gave it to me as a present when I was like 10 or something like that. Yeah. Um, and now I play a Jazzmaster, ah. the Troy von Leuven um, signature model. And yeah. I'm actually really happy with it. So it's exactly the kind of tone I want to get out of my guitar. And, it's a, yeah. and for you, what's the difference between the Jazzmaster and the Stratocaster? <laughs> from your point of view. Um, yeah, I think the tone is a little bit thicker. Yeah. And um, this is the strat. Actually, when you go to um, the, the bridge pickup, pickup. it's it's just gets so um, without. Uh, how can I say? It's not thick enough for me. Uh -huh. And um, so the little bit thicker um, pickups on the jack uh, jazz, uh, jazz yes. master just make uh, the sound like. I want to have it because so my uh, ideal sounds, guys like Sonic Youth, etc. Yeah. yeah, played that too. And you just, when you hear and you know, when you grew with that record, sure. you just want to play it like this. Yeah. And so there is exactly the guitar That's the for tone, it. Yeah. that's your musical source. Yeah, and also you can yeah. switch like from blue stuff to heavier stuff. Yeah. And there's no problem with the tone. So yeah. it doesn't crack away and it fits actually also in some heavier stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Talking about heavier stuff, did you. Uh, join that kind of metal wave as well? <laughs> I actually, uh, when I was like 13 to 16, I listened to really much hardcore punk, metalcore, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but someday it was too much for me, but I definitely got connections to that now. Yeah. Yeah. So when I listen to it, it's like always, I not get the distance to it. I'm, I, I just listen to it and it's, yeah, that's cool. It's not my music anymore, yeah. but I like it. And I really like to listen to it because the guys are technically like, wow, really, really good. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think that the, the rhythms and stuff is... is yeah, it, it's, it's, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah. I, I just do my, my thing and I think... That's the good thing in music. There's, uh, you can yeah. be, go be good at so many different genres, and there is no better. It's it's yeah. just a, a personal thing, and of course, there's yes. something better for your personal taste. But in general, you know, it's like, yeah. And there are some bands like doing this from some kind of bluesy jams to metal to jazz, and this all in one band. So there are a few new bands to do that, and that's really cool to grow up with that kind of music scene. Yeah. So globally. So, um, yeah. <laughs> when we just met, um, you asked me a question, like, um, you know, how I would set up a guitar yeah. and stuff like this. So, when I buy a new guitar, what can I do to make it fit perfectly to my playing style? Yeah, so, yeah. I found this guitar in my collection, which <laughs> I probably bought 15 years ago. 
And um, it is a Tokai ST1000 model. You can see that, uh, or ST100. Mm. Um, so ST100 means it's only 100 made of this. Ah, so right. this is a, <laughs> um, a copy of a 50 Strat, okay? Yeah. And it has an original three-way switch. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a nice guitar, yeah. but I wouldn't use it like that. And uh, people know me, Maple Strats is not um, <laughs> the guitar that I usually yeah, and... uh, am seen with. And so let me explain what's going on here. The treble only goes down. Yeah, not goes up. Yeah, yeah. it's not free floating. That's the first thing. I would simply break the, the bar, <laughs> you know, just because <laughs> yeah. nothing happens and yeah. I would... <laughs> uh, so that's something I would work on. And then I see things um, like maybe this camera can see it, the top one or this one. The string tree that holds down the, yeah. the B and the E string is kind of very low. And then the angle is, 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 is steep. Yeah. Um, so what makes the, this with the tone? Or? Uh, it doesn't make anything with the tone. It just makes more friction, more pressure ah, to right. the nut. Yeah. And then um, it, it, it kind of, there's a friction on the nut and this is um, not good for the tune, tuning stability. Ah, okay. um, what else? Um, uh, yeah, let's have a look. So the rest is kind of okay, but I think these are 11s. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like ouch yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> you could, if I would play a, a drop, whatever, uh, E flat yeah. tuning, it would be okay. But okay, I would try to make this my guitar now. Yeah. And um, let's go. Let's go and let's see how, how, let's, I start with changing the strings. Okay. In a brutal way, I just do this. <laughs> Watch that nobody gets hurt because. So, and then we get rid of this and of this. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. So, strings out. Yeah. Okay. The next, the next thing I would do is. Um, I would have a look at the tremolo system yep. and on the neck, actually when I checked it before, um, I, we can do this afterwards mm -hmm. with strings on again, um, how to adjust the neck. Um, this guitar <laughs> is the, the, the screw how to tighten the neck. Uh, you cannot access it without mm -hmm. getting the scratch plate off. Okay. Um, so yeah. this guitar needs <laughs> some special uh, treatment. Treatment, yeah. yeah. Get the scratch, uh, but it was kind of okay. And uh, I have a look mm -hmm. again when the strings are on. Yeah. So, but the first thing I would do is I will have a look at the tremolo um, system. And the first thing is I take off the screws, uh, the, the the springs, sorry, or maybe two, and see how the whole thing is moving let's see if you know okay it goes all the way this way and it goes back this way mm -hmm. um, so what i can adjust here is i would go to the extreme top here ah see this, this yeah was, it moves it moves like up yeah. yeah so the first thing i do is i kind of take out the inner screws um, so they're not touching the, the surface of the top plate. Mm -hmm. So they are just giving a little guidance, but not touching it. So the okay. next thing is I press and hold it down till I feel the end of the block yeah. touching the wood. And then I tighten the outer screws to the point, aha, now it's, you, you can see, it's, so now it's moving, yeah? yeah? So I would just simply go to the point where it's getting to the ground and so that it does not move anymore. Mm -hmm. So, and the same thing here, out, 
and then back in, uh -huh, and I can actually feel it while doing it on in the scr screwdriver. Yeah. So it, it's just a, the point where it starts to touch where the the, the top of the screw touches uh, the, plate. the plate. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, this is first attempt. Okay, double check this screw now. And here's another thing you can do when you lift the handle. Um, th the plate should not move, mm. you know, on the, on yeah, the neck okay. of the screw. That's too much. A little bit more. Yeah, that's kind of, that should be a good compromise here. Okay, so this is adjusting the screws. Next thing is, let's put on strings. Anything I forgot about? Well, it did work, so yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm not looking into the electronics. But it's not free-floating right now. Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Okay. But we'll, <laughs> we'll go there, um, put in some strings, and, okay, um, I usually start with a big string and do it this way and turn it around, get it through the hole. So, and here's the next thing. Make sure that the bowl end is yeah, really... Yeah, I know. <laughs> I made them fall <laughs> twice. Yeah. And afterwards, you know yeah. what to do. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is the way I do it um, with the big strings. I don't okay. need much room. I would simply cut it here just before the oh, second. Okay. So that's that's plenty. And now, uh -huh, this, these are slightly different from the fender ones. Um, Maybe we can show that. Uh, is it high enough? Maybe not. Let's see. I, I usually stick it in the middle. Wow. So down to the to the bottom. Then I do the angle thing. Yeah. So it's important to have a um, yeah a, a good bend here. Not yeah, not, not too I soft. Mm -hmm. this, this needs to be really so and. Because while otherwise it will plop up. Exactly. And, yeah. So, and while doing the whole process, what I'm doing here is this finger holds it down yeah. on the nut and the other three fingers... Just pull it up so you get much tension, tension. on here. Yeah. yeah. So I already have kind of a defined tension. And then, okay, this is with hands, but I also have a, whatever, a winder. Yeah, a winder. <laughs> a doodle. As we say here in Saarbrücken, okay, I here's, <laughs> so, yeah. so, um, so this is like the first string. And then I even do some stretching like now, and this is performed like this. Maybe I show it to the camera. So I have my, my, my fingers under the string, and then I uh, pull those up while pressing down with a button. Yeah. And then I can move the hand along the string and get, you know, so the tuning will stretching. not get lower yeah. when you play the guitar. J just not that much. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in a live situation, is this uh, and very important. <laughs> and and I made the experience, you know, and on a live kick is always a trade off of playing fresh strings, which um, don't break usually. Yeah, but or get the risk of not st st staying in tune. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so. Uh, or you play the old strings and then shit happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, Our band was named Kill Strings, so that got a history. <laughs> <laughs> How many strings did you kill, actually? Uh, a lot. So and then I moved to a certain brand, and after that, I, I didn't get problems with that okay. anymore. What, what what is the brand that you're uh, using? Elixir. Elixir. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they stay fresh for a really long time because they have this nano web technology. Yeah. yeah. And they are really stable. Okay. I figured out. And and I have a, a similar story with my strings. Uh, okay, just show you how I've I, I, I do the same procedure, just like on yeah. the first string, repeating. And now with a doodle, it's faster. Okay, and then yeah. the same procedure with the stretching. And as you can see, there is one winding here and there's two windings there. All right. So I try to keep it low, yeah. not, not too many windings. Um, because? Well, if, if you have more windings, there is more string that can be stretched and which uh, can all right. cause detuning and friction. All right. Yeah. Especially because the, 
the ones, the winded strings, they, they kind of can uh, click, 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 click. Yeah, they can click off in the winding, so yeah. Not mm. good for the tuning. <laughs> yeah. And um, in case, ah, back to the strings, my strings. Um, now I do, of course, unpaid advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, the Ernie Ball strings, where is it? Here's the, yeah. the rest, what's left over of the package. Um, and these strings, um, Ernie Ball Hybrid Slinkies, this is kind of a set from uh, 46, which is like 10s. Yeah, and the, the 9s in the, the nines. bottoms. Yeah. yeah, so uh, I have um, big bottom strings and high strings are, uh, yeah. are, are the um, 9 sets, so it's, it's a mixture. And um, the old strings, from Ernie Ball, hybrid slinkies, they used to break a lot. And mm -hmm. <laughs> they have this RPS, which means reinforced plain strings, because their strings were so shitty. Maybe I gave them to you, the old ones. Yeah. And then you <laughs> killed them, because I, I had the same problem. And Ernie Ball changed the recipe of the, of, okay. of the steel. When was that? I think this was like 10 years ago. All right, okay. In the beginning, um, they were not available. And then the, the strings had, um, yeah, they had, they had this kind of issue. And now, now they fixed it. And these, these they actually, I trust those strings now. They last long and they're good. Yes. Uh, and they still sound like the strings, like the old ones. And mm -hmm. I got used to the sound. I'm not saying yeah. it's, it's the best sound. It's just the sound that I got used to. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> like when you listen to records with a special guitar and sure. you just get those sound. And yeah. what about, um, I remember years ago you, you came here to my place and you played that 335. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and you, you liked it? Yeah, I liked it a lot. <laughs> what did you like about that guitar? I don't know. So if you haven't plugged it in, yeah. there's such a great sound to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think um, this time I actually played it without an amp all the time. Mm -hmm. So, and this was one of the first guitar I got and I just played it and I was like, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's the sound <laughs> I want to hear from that type of guitar. Mm -hmm. And so I got it here and it's just great. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's like, it's got so, it's airy, but um, defined. And um, I really want to listen to it later on on an amp. So okay. I, can, yeah, yeah. I can say what, what, uh, what I mean. But it's also like you got those old blues style from this guitar. And mm -hmm. um, when you think a little bit um, wider, you can play it also in heavier. So I actually bought an Epiphone uh, Sheraton. So after I played this one, <laughs> uh, I, I actually got a few feedback issues. And uh, it's sure. always like a problem with that kind of guitar. But um, yeah, it was just great. And um, it's, um, do you have any difficulties to switch from like a Strat scale to a Gibson? No, no, it actually. doesn't matter. Yeah. You, you. I, I, yeah, in the first place I got some issues because my Jazz Master is actually really longer. Long. Yeah. yeah. And so I, when I went to my gigs, I got my Strat and my Jazz Master with me. Mm -hmm. And I actually switched like three, four times in the gig, the guitars. Well. And, um, in the first place, I you just get used to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. It's not like I can play it blind. <laughs> so in the first place, because I just grew up with the strat, I know what to do there. I can lay on my bed, just look at the sky, and just play. <laughs> and yeah. you find the notes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Without looking. Yeah. Ah, just one little comment here. Like the 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 last strings, you can see I make longer. It's uh, so I have a little bit more room for more windings, and. Uh, Especially what I do here, I, s I plug it in, yeah. I make uh, the, the, the turnaround, and then I just go through that thing again. Yeah, all right. And this is kind of a locking thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's kind of, I, I have now how many corners? One, two, three corners. Yeah, that, that just keeps it in place. Yeah. So and that, yeah, that, that's because uh, the they just get the tendency to, to slip, slip out and, yeah, and, and, <laughs> and when that happens, it's over. Yeah. And, and the, the strings get kind of um, softer 
and then when they have been bent, they, yeah. they never will stick in, in the thing. So for the last two strings, I always do that. All right. Not on the, the rest is, is fine in the traditional way, just one mm -hmm. angle and then it's, <laughs> that's it. So, okay. The winder or... See? Yeah. That's hmm? really beauty. <laughs> Yeah, some, we had some great comments about that guitar in other episodes because uh, it sounded so good. Yeah. And it's been used heavily uh, in my session days in the studio. And I used wax here to get the settles um, f from red rattling. Oh, yeah. So just, uh, you know, candle wax does the job. <laughs> and then, yes. uh, of course, it needs to be set for mm. your strings. Uh, otherwise, it, it's a nightmare to change. Yeah. Can you always explain why a guitar sounds so good? Um, or is it more like a feeling to you? No, 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 no. There are a, a few parameters that um, I believe make a, a guitar sound good. So one aspect to me is the neck. Yeah. If the neck has good quality, if the neck is super strong, is, 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 is good wood, it's cut in the right way. Well, there are some, some theories about that. I'm not mm. going into mm. these, this kind of thing. <laughs> All I'm saying is, if there's a good neck, that's a, that's already a good starting point. And then, what you need to find is to um, is a a body that matches the neck. So if if yeah. you have a great neck um, and you have a, a body that's also great but doesn't match that neck, yeah, then the guitar doesn't sound like yeah. it should or it yeah. could. It could sound yeah. because there is. Um, it's like if you would. Um, um, it, it kind of the resonances kind of can erase it uh, against yeah. you know, and, and yeah. then it's not it's, yeah. it's not the thing. <laughs> and of, on strats I have more experience, so I know if there's a body that has more than one piece, two piece, or three piece mm -hmm. body, I prefer that actually because the resonance within the body is not so extreme mm -hmm. on one frequency yeah. because of the three pieces of wood or two pieces of yeah. wood. And that makes it less critical. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and then uh, if you go in other details, it would be like um, we have to to. Oh yeah. So this I can feel when when it's losing yeah. the tension. So uh, this needs extra treatment. Okay. No tuning at all. And um, yeah. So the, the neck is important. The body is important. Um, How important are the pickup to the sound? It depends, but I would say also very important. I mean, if yeah. <laughs> if, if the guitar on on the if the wood of the guitar is shit, you know, even the best pickups will transport shit. Yeah. Um, but if the mm. substance of the guitar is great, and you get shitty pickups, <laughs> and, and then shitty pickups, you're not getting a good tone. Yeah. So it's of course you know if you have that kind of level of the of the wood itself and the, the dry tone without the pickups and then add some great pickups to that this is where the magic starts yeah. you know like so on this one now we are back <coughs> on the this side of the guitar i do okay maybe i can unplug the whole thing for a minute <laughs> um, so i actually see now the tremolo is kind of free floating Right now, but you it's, will erase it with the strings right now. Yeah, so the spring, you know, this is yep. two springs spring. now. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's kind of free floating. And we have to get somewhere in tune. Can you give me E? Ooh. Not just skip. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> that's. And E again. Free floating. Yeah, I know. So when you get tension on the one string, all the others going to change that tuning. Okay, that's close enough for the first yep. attempt. But now, where is my tremolo? Uh, with the two springs, it's now free floating, which I wanted. Yeah. But it's not. That's uh, yeah. that's like a major third. Yeah. And I like the minor third. So, mm -hmm. 
it's, it's too wide. So what are you going to do now? Uh, first, I use the third sp uh, sp uh, spring, put it in here. And let me guess, you can tune it with the, with that one, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's now... Uh, okay, I'm way too high. And then, of course, this will be out of tune and we have go to go back and yeah, forth yeah. And, and the whole nine yards. But this is a process, so yeah. um, I release those screws a bit. And now I need your E again. But as you can see, that went... Ah, I ran the wrong one. Ah, Which is the wrong <laughs> The wrong way, okay. Yeah. Other way, so sorry. Down. <laughs> yeah, so more into this. No, no, I'm totally wrong. I was the right way. So you have I, to put it. I have up. to. I have to release it even more yeah. because I can see that the plate is uh, too much in line with the body. So, so yeah, when you when you put more tension on it, it will get not uh, free floating, just blocked. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I want it free floating, so I need to have more of that room. Yeah. So let's see how how we get there. Okay, that process takes some... Can... Okay, close enough, but where are we in... Hold step, okay, I need a little more. So <laughs> go back, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, I try to be... Mm. <laughs> Yeah. So, well, still, we need more. Okay. One, two, three, four, or three <laughs> and a half. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> and this one, try to be in line. So. Aha, now we. Yeah. So, yeah. and now? Mm. So this is yeah. my interval. This is the minor third I'm talking about. So let's plug it in. See what, what we can hear. Yeah. Okay, the guitar is not in tune. How are the strings now? And maybe you can see the action for me is a little bit too high. Yeah. Um, um, that's a matter of taste, but it fe I, I can feel that, you know, yeah, I mean, I know. If, so uh, for me, it's a little bit too much. Okay, let's yeah. see if I have the right kind <laughs> of, um, this is the original Fender, which is smaller, and this is kind of European. Let's see, ah, and they, ah, th right. they are European. So I have to go back. How do you decide to, um, make the saddles or the neck. So when your strings are too high, there are two options to get these down, or? Yeah. Are they? Um, you know, I'm not changing the angle of the neck. All right. Um, that's the other thing you could do. You could have, um, you know, some, some, some little piece of paper or carton oh, box okay. underneath to make, to change the neck angle. But then the contact of the neck and the body gets lost. And so the sound or the vibration couldn't transfer from the neck to the body. Exactly. And so, yeah. it, it's a compromise. Fender, yeah. Fender used to do that, you know, with, with shims or shimneys or something. Mm -hmm. I forgot the English word. Um, and then it changes the tone it, in a oh. way that's getting more percussive and less sustained, which I, I don't like. Yeah, you could like it, but it's not. Yeah, it's not my, it's not my taste. Um, and the other option you have is you can um, have more pressure on the neck back so that that the, that the angle of the neck um, just bends yeah. towards you. So uh, you don't change the angle in that kind of way, exactly. more in that kind of way. Exactly, inside yeah. the neck itself. But I was checking the neck by doing this. I, I press and hold down the, the big E string and the first one. And when I touch this here in the middle, yeah. you can see there is a little room 
um, but not too much. Okay. And I like that. Um, um, it is almost straight. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, if if the if the string would not ring at all, it would be totally straight, and that's sometimes a bit too much. Mm -hmm. But this is a process, you know. Sometimes it takes me months <laughs> to to <laughs> figure out how you like yeah. this on this guitar. Yeah. 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 I mean, to to get a little bit here and a little bit there, and if you do it on this end, uh, you you lose that bit. But um, this is like adjusting. You know the the basic things, yeah. and then of course it can be optimized in many rounds, uh, yeah. Yeah. cycles of getting there. Because so. also the wood must work when you turn yeah. on the screw, so there are like two days to get the neck in that position, like the screw to have dictates. To, yeah. yeah, can can I get the the note? So for me, you know, yeah. so now this is the, the height of the strings that I'm used to. Yeah. And uh, of course I could shriek it a, a little bit more, but <laughs> first it was out of the range. It, it, it was feeling shit for me. Yeah. You know, and and this, this is okay, you know, yeah. and when I get in the zone where, where the height feels okay, I can play, you okay. know, because uh, this is what you are used to. So, next big problem is get the whole thing a bit closer in tune and look for the <laughs> intonation, okay? Okay, so what do you mean with intonation? Um, so the 12th fret is in tune with the first? Yeah. Or with, yeah. So, okay, this is, this is the first uh, attempt here, just to get the overall yeah. guitar in tune. Because that's also relevant, because yeah, if the angle sure. here is not right, the whole position of the... Yeah, especially when it's free-floating, so, yeah. We didn't have the easiest guitar for that job, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> if you know how to do it with a Strat, you can do it on any guitar. It only gets easier. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, and the things, you know, they have this kind of polytune things here, which shows me most of the lights are green. It's pretty okay. okay. <laughs> and now we look into the detail. So that's, that's a, a, that's a process. Okay. Put the guitar on. Can I give you that one? So you yeah. I put yeah. this back. Thank Beautiful you. guitar. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Let's see what we get on the big E string. So, get the tuner. So, this yeah. is now perfectly in tune. Maybe the camera can show that in a way that we, we both see what's going on. Yeah. So, that's this. Ah, the other way. I have to get a feel. So this is okay. Let's say this, you know, it's in, it, tune, yeah. it's in tune or maybe a little bit too low. So let's do a little bit too high, and you know, it helps to bend. And it's okay. It's in tune. Yeah. So next thing is, I go to the 12th fret and hold that down and look at the pitch on the tuner. It's too yes, high. Get high. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, there's other points we have to check, which is the 7th fret, oh, sorry, it's the B. The harmonics. Harmonics, yeah. yeah. So, see, it's a little bit too sharp, and then if I press it, it's a little bit too sharp. It's not that bad. So, this mm -hmm. side seems to be pretty okay, and the higher we go, and do the same thing here on the, what is it, 12, 15, 17, mm -hmm. 19th fret. Yeah. 19th fret. There's a B, and now I press this down, and then it's a little too sharp. It's, it's, so what I would do is I would move the saddle a little bit towards uh, okay. that end. So, so I, yeah. So of course so, now yeah. out of tune. 
what's happening right now. So the string gets a little bit longer. So yeah, and yeah. I, I move, I move the place where the harmonics are because over the fretboard because the yeah. the, the, the fretboard is where it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. It is, so and by changing the length with the saddle, I I kind of move the the the, the um, the harmonics the, yes, and yeah. try to, to have this on top of the fret. To so match. you just adjust uh, the half of the string to the 12th fret because there's the place where the octave is. Just, yeah. yeah. And the same, by the way, with the harmonics. Yeah. You know? And then let's let's try this one. See, the B is, is nicely in tune and it's a little bit too sharp, but here is another not another aspect um, it's called stratitis in Germany stratitis <laughs> or whatever um, the magnets of the pickups mm -hmm. pull on the string and when yeah. there's a long string and a lot of mass that is moving the influence of the magnetic field it's, of the pickups yeah. is, is not so much and when I have a shorter string like here it's only like magnetic field yeah and yeah. so this kind of it pulls it just down and so uh, the pitch goes higher. Up. Pitch yeah. goes up, goes higher, exactly. So... For me, it's, ash it's okay for the first uh, attempt. So let's try it for the other one. I mean, we, we could spend hours with that guitar, but it's... Um, uh, that's pretty okay. See, it's also a little bit too high. Mm -hmm. So, since I move the uh, position of the tremolo, I of course have to readjust everything. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit too high still. Yeah. yeah okay. A little bit more. And, you know, there's other effects when you press down the string. Um, ah, that's the next thing, because when I slide it this <laughs> way, because the, the plate of the tremolo is angled, mm -hmm. the string goes up again. So I have to move that down. Because when you uh, screw it back, yeah. so it's got just higher. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of chasing, moving. Yeah, like all the time. So, yeah. Moving targets. Tuner just went off. Okay, got a little bit yeah. too sharp. Ah, that's the one. Yeah, well, see? Yeah. That's pretty close. Okay, so. Yeah, it's a little bit too sharp. In general, so. Yes, yeah, okay, a little bit too sharp. Same procedure with this one. Okay, one, two. A little too. Okay, but you see, it's getting there. Mm -hmm. It's a similar position. I, I speed it up, otherwise, we spend three yeah. hours doing it. Sure. So, just. Here, one. Okay. Okay, good enough for jazz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, see? That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, now the guitar should be uh -huh. mm -hmm. next thing is the G string <laughs> how to tune a guitar yeah. and by the way you see what I'm fretting here is a G chord without anything it's like mm -hmm. yeah. so and a <coughs> a guitar is never in like 
uh, what's the kind uh, uh, temperate temp temperate Stimmung? Yeah, temperate Stimmung. I don't know the English term for it. Let, let's call it temperate tuning. Yeah, um, I know. And uh, there's a, a, um, um, a Swedish guy, Peer, blah blah blah, who makes frets. Yeah, they're <laughs> looking so crazy. Yeah. When, yeah. And th th these kind of very weird frets show you that a, an electric guitar will never be perfectly yeah. in tune. So you have to find a few chords that you have as a reference and the G chord is my starting point okay. because I get like the open strings and the low string and then I switch to D and everything will sound horrible. Oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, that's But the nice. E chord is... Yeah. is <laughs> that's too high. Okay, I, did, I was not playing the A string when I did my mm -hmm. G chord. Yeah. So. Um, sometimes I do it with the C also, so. Mm. so. And here's the typical problem of the G string, it's always way too high. And too high sounds worse than too flat. Yeah, I know. So I just bend it, and I bend it even harder. Yeah, yeah no, it's <laughs> So what's the problem with the G string? Oh, I don't know what it is. It, it is uh, probably in the old days they used to have uh, windings. windings on that too. Yeah. yeah. And then now they are plain and the, the, there's more mass and for some reason they are always too loud, you know, because the pickups, mm -hmm. the pole pieces are too high because yeah. they are still <laughs> the way. And then uh, the pitch is too high, everything. G string is always a problem. <laughs> Play power chords. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So now this is my tremolo setup. Um, there's another thing about a string tree. At this point, there is no string tree. Mm -hmm. But when I hit it very hard, yeah, it just flips over. The string. Over. Yeah, I know that problem from your strat because that was like the 80s strat where they got these um, things to block this, uh, the strings over here to ah. use the Floyd Rose yeah. and it wasn't there. So I didn't get a string to and just all the time flips over and over and over and I, I went to the <laughs> store so they just installed something like that and it, it worked. Yeah, it worked. So it, it was like yeah. the, the locking nut yeah, yeah, I think, for, yeah, for the Floyd like Rose. That. Yeah. <laughs> so, the original string tree here is something that I don't like that much because it's if you if you see how low that it's I, I can put the yeah. strings underneath here and then so I try to get it in tune um, but now the angle here from 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 the yeah. nut to the string tree is so extreme there will be a lot of friction, especially when I bend the notes. You know, mm -hmm. every time I bend yeah. the note, there's a little, you can feel it with the finger. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the string kind Just of fold it up. Yeah. slips and it, it will kind of cut itself, you know, some groove there. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the end, you, you, you get this <laughs> noise and it's no, no fun. So, what to do? Um, raise the string tree. And this is, you need. Uh, a, a screw and maybe some other kind of oh wait a minute I just get the strings out before we yeah. have everything popping out because there's pressure on it so I remove that screw and replace it with a longer one this yeah. this one <laughs> is as you can see a little yeah. bit longer so and what I'm doing is uh, get the string tree Come on. So I place it on top of the strings. And pull it down with the screw. Yeah, and yeah. pull it down with a screw and just a tiny little bit and not too much. Use the same hole. So, and use, so you can see, okay. Now yeah. I do a, a tiny little bit. So I have some pressure here on the nut so the string cannot be so easily yeah. pulled out. Yeah. So it stays yeah. in the in, in the nut, and that's about it. 
And the other side effect is this is kind of a little bit moving when you use the tremolo. If, if, when you look very closely, you can see how it moves. Yeah, it just flow. Uh, yeah, a, a tiny a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's that's the thing about the string tree. <laughs> and then um, yeah, we are talking. Oh, <laughs> of course. Yeah, I have hey, to reach you. Yeah, to Okay, um, another thing that I always do is, I showed in another episode, I'm using this um, Teflon wire okay. uh, or tape, which is used for plumbing, you know, yeah. and um, this goes around here. Um, okay, I make a quick and dirty drop here. Um, Get this out, the bar, wait a minute. Mm -mm -mm. Get the bar out. Um. So here's the bar. Next thing is I wrap it around the bar. So you just, it's, it's harder to go around. Yeah, yeah. And, and it protects metal from touching metal. Huh. So see that? Um, and I think that's enough. So I cut it somewhere here, and then... Why you, uh, you want to protect metal from touching metal? Um, it rattles. Yeah. Uh, uh, ah, and, um, you know, this is the noise when, the, when it's clock, 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 mm -hmm. clock. And, and this is like, okay, I, I, I have to get in there. Do I get... Yeah, I should have it now. Yeah. See, and the next aspect is it's it's yeah, kind it's of just harder to yeah, go around, but not too hard. You know, yeah. it's just perfect. And then, where where's the, the cable is here? So with this mm. now, I have a nice connection, yeah. and this. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way. So I got one question. Yeah. When I look at your guitar, especially yeah. this one, there's yeah. always one screw turned out at ah. the tremolo. Why does that happen? Also by your signature guitars. Yeah. I mean, back in the days when, when I would have been doing the same kind of job to this yeah. guitar, I was uh, um, trying to, you know, turn the screws and I found out that the third screw from the top had... Uh, the, the thing didn't stay in tune yeah. for some <laughs> reason. Maybe the neck of the screw was bended or some, some bullshit. Yeah. And I just got rid of the screw <laughs> and forgot about the screw and of so, course it works. Yeah. 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 It simply stays in tune better and it works and that became my trademark and... <laughs> yeah, so you just keep it uh, until today. Yeah. yeah, and here's another thing about the real deal vintage thread is if I try to, to adjust the neck on this guitar, I have to take everything apart. Yeah. The real vintage guitars have a... <coughs> yeah, put it here. Have a, a truss rod that goes in the neck and that ends kind of at the highest point just under the, the fretboard and I can access it with a screwdriver here. Can you see? I can really turn it. Yeah. Um, and that's, um, yeah, I can adjust the truss rod on this guitar without taking it apart. Nobody does it anymore. Um, I should, <laughs> I should when, yeah. when we do blue guitars, but we don't have it, we don't have it either yet. Um, yeah, and um, okay, any more questions on this? I don't think so. Okay, then let's play that guitar just to see how that sounds. And uh, 
Yeah. If you want to have a, have a go, maybe you remember. Uh, you have a pick. No, not, not right now. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, can you? Yeah, that's... That's exactly what I mean. It just gets airy, <laughs> bit dirty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So also when I was younger, I just listened to some blues records from BB yeah. King, etc. So yeah. it's the same kind of way with Thurston Moore and his uh, jazz master with that guitar. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Been great. Yeah, Thank I have, you. I have a few notes on this one. <laughs> okay. So, because um, what's different uh, from this, this yeah. one? To oh yeah. I got a question. Yeah. What can you do with the pickups? How to adjust the pickups so that it sounds good? Okay, that's a good point. <laughs> let's 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 see what we can do with the pickups on the strat then. Yeah. Um, since we didn't touch them. Okay. First, the sound here. Ah, you hear how bright a strat yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Especially in comparison to that one. Yeah. But what to do is I reduce the treble a little bit. We get there. So, yeah. and the next, the first thing is um, from what I hear on this guitar, I would have actually a look at the electronics inside. Yeah, um, my feeling is it's not perfectly matched um, because what I hear is like. Too bright for me. See, yeah, this is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And part of it yeah. is, is, of course, because the pickups and the position. But the other thing is the dampening of the tone controls. Mm -hmm. And to my ears, first impression is the dampening is too much. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I I would simply investigate that and see what I could Just, optimize. Yeah, that's on the electronic side. But to to compensate the, the setting of the pickups is like I could go and try to make it more bass by having this uh, pickup. So higher. when you pull the pickup up, it get more bass. Yeah. When you pull it down, it's more bright. Yeah. I show you. Yeah. Well, let's try. Base. And then, of course, the rule for me is uh, to balance out the pickups. The thin strings needs the most bass, so the highest point on the pickups is should be the highest string. Yeah, the, yeah. the is the high E string and like the bridge pickup. This is like the yeah. highest point, and the lowest is kind of this one here. Let's. See. Already makes yeah. more sense, okay? Yeah. So So what about the rest? I would say I'd simply press and hold the, the strings down and have a look. This is the highest point, that's the lowest point. That looks kind of healthy to me already. So this is mm. uh, this is how I would set it up just a little bit. Highest point, low, lowest point. Is there some kind of uh, point of if, uh, when it gets too high, especially on the G string, because you see the pickup there is just really big, and uh, we already talked about stratitus. Yeah. So, um, see, the, the further down the pickup yeah. to this thing, the less influence, because here, the, the the string is is kind of in the center of the field, yeah. and the magnetic field has more grab to the string. Here, it's kind of there's the, the um, it just, it does, it's at the beginning, so there's no that much yeah, influence. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is not so critical. This is the critical okay. pickup when it comes to Stratidius. Uh. <laughs> New strings, and you know all these 
procedures that that yeah. we've done need to be repeated. It's it's a slight yeah. turn here and a slight turn there and getting back in tune and stretch it again. Yeah, just yeah. Also, rest it for a day. Tomorrow it will sound different. Sure. And then go back. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the way how to to make a guitar your own and <laughs> to do this the setup and um, yeah. Um, that was kind of a journey. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But now we got something you can play. Yeah. And it feels like it's your guitar. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Hey, thanks nice. for joining in. Yeah. And thank you. <laughs> yeah. See you another time. Yeah. See you.